Did you know that your laser machine won't last long without it? But how do you find it? Don't worry, we are here to help you and your machine. Watch this video until the end to find out what device we're talking about and how to choose it. Hello everybody, this is David. Welcome back to Virmer. Let's start by discussing why a chiller is needed in the first place. The CO2 laser tube of your machine generates a lot of heat during operation. If it's not cooled, the tube might overheat, leading to reduced power and even damage the machine. A properly selected chiller maintains unstable temperature and extends the life of the equipment. The most important aspect of a chiller as its cooling capacity. The higher this figure, the more heat the chiller can dissipate, allowing the machine to operate efficiently. Another important criterion when choosing a chiller is its temperature control accuracy. This parameter is critical in processes where even minor deviations from the required temperature can lead to reduced product quality or equipment failure. There are two main types of cooling systems air-cooled and water-cooled. Let's talk about air-cooled chillers, like the CW3000, use fans and radiators to dissipate heat. Water-cooled chillers, such as the 5000 and higher models, use a compressor and refrigerant for more efficient cooling. It is also important to consider the capacity of the chiller's reservoir. To make the right choice, focus on the laser power. There should be enough liquid to effectively dissipate heat, about 3-5 liters per kilowatt of heat load. To choose a chiller, you need to consider the power of your laser tube. For example, a simple CW3000 air-cooled chiller is suitable for tubes up to 60 watts. For an 80-150 watts tube, the CW5000 with water cooling is the optimal choice. For high-power tubes from 150 watts and above, you'll need a chiller like the CW5200 or even more powerful models. By the way, leave a comment with the type of tube you have and which chiller you use. And if you're interested in how to choose the power of a laser tube, check out the video on our channel. Very important point, don't forget about the ambient temperature. If you live in a hot climate, it's better to choose a model with extra cooling capacity. For example, Watson machines are equipped with water-cooled chillers like the CW5000. This model effectively cools powerful laser sources of 100-150 watts, which extends the lifespan and productivity of the machine itself. Okay, let's say we've chosen a suitable chiller. Let's look at how to properly connect a water-cooled one to your machine. First, connect the hoses, one for the water supply, the other for the water return. Then, fill the chiller tank with distilled water. After that, turn on the chiller and set the desired temperature. Usually, it's between 18 and 22 degrees, depending on the tube requirements. Make sure that the water circulates smoothly, there are no air bubbles trapped in the tubes, and the chiller maintains a stable temperature. This is the key to the reliable and long-lasting operation of your laser tube. If you need to replace your laser tube, watch how to do it in our video. Now you know how to properly choose and connect a chiller for your laser machine. Remember, a good chiller is an investment in the longevity of your equipment. If you found this video helpful, give us a like, subscribe to the channel and share your questions in the comment. This is Wilmer, my name is David, see you in the next video. Ooh.